I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling. I'm and we're back. Russell from Aussie Mushroom Supplies. Today we're making a shotgun terrarium to house those beautiful mushrooms we've been making. Let's get into it. The two main things you need for fruiting mushrooms is oxygen and humidity. The way we're going to create humidity, perlite in the bottom of our container, and the way we're going to create oxygen or airflow is drilling holes in the terrarium. It's called a shotgun terrarium because we drill lots of holes in it and it looks like it's been... A few tips, too many holes, it's going to be too dry and too much airflow. Not enough and the mushrooms will suffocate or not grow properly. If we have too few holes, our oyster mushrooms may be long and leggy rather than nice big thick caps. So if your mushrooms are growing a little bit leggy, you might have to add a few more holes. So we'll probably start with not going too many holes at once and then we can always add more later. One thing we want to watch out for is not putting too many holes in there because you don't want too much airflow and everything drying out. So we're going to try and find a bit of a happy balance. With our holes, we're going to start from about this high down. CO2 is heavy. Mushrooms breathe oxygen, expel CO2. So the main focus is having holes near the bottom so that CO2 can escape. We'll try to leave the top without any holes in it just to try and stop too much humidity getting out. Let's get stuck into drilling holes. We've got a, just a Makita drill here. Doesn't matter what sort of size hole you do. Obviously the bigger your hole, you want a fewer. If it's smaller, you want more holes. It's not super important to get it exactly perfect. Mushrooms are pretty bulletproof. We just need enough to allow enough air exchange to get rid of the CO2. So by the time we get some perlite in there, it's going to probably be around this sort of high. So we want to keep our holes above this sort of area, but obviously not too high. So we'll, go, we'll keep it below here. These tubs, you can get them from anywhere, reject shop, Bunnings, doesn't matter what size shape you use, this will work with virtually anything. Having a clear one's obviously better because it lets light in and also you can see your mushrooms growing. Some people add holes in the bottom. I don't because if you want to put this on your kitchen bench or in your lounge room where you can watch them grow, water's going to leak out cause a mess so you don't have to put holes in the bottom a lot of people do just so any excess water drains away it is a good idea to make sure you don't have water pulling in the bottom so if you just have some holes sort of maybe just off the bottom so you can tip it out every so often don't push hard on the plastic otherwise you crack it and you'll have to get another one we're doing the holes about every two inches apart this will keep it nice and even Don't forget, it doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure you do all four sides. And my arm's getting sore. Home stretch. I'm going to do just a couple little holes on the ends here so I can tip out any excess water. We've got lots of little holes all around the walls. This is going to allow for a good air exchange but also keep most of our humidity in and keep things happy. Keeping your walls misted is one way to keep the humidity up in your terrarium. So you want to fill the bottom up with wet perlite. Perlite has a very high surface area and the water evaporating off it creates humidity. You want to cover the bottom in a good sort of two to three inches. The more you've got, the less you'll have to mist your container. For today, we're not going to wet it. We're just going to fill it up to show you what it looks like, but you'll wet it before you put it in there. Also, you can just fill it up with water and let it drain out to rehydrate it. Whoa! Some serious cleaning to do. This is a blooper and a half. That's working though. Fantastic. Would you look at that? Make sure you have holes down at your substrate level so that CO2 the mushrooms give off can get out. And just like that, we've got an awesome easy terrarium for our mushrooms to fruit in. Where'd the spray bottle go? The only thing you may need to do 
is mist every so often on the walls of your terrarium just to keep water droplets on the sides. If you get anything growing on your perlite, you can give it a soak in boiling water to kill off anything on there and chuck it back in. Containers like this, you can stack mushroom bags two or three high, depending how big your container is. If your mushrooms are looking a little leggy, like oyster mushrooms, you may have to add a few more holes. If things start to dry out, you may have to rehydrate your perlite. Whatever you put in here, if you put your mushroom bags in there, make sure it stays in its bag. You cut a cross in there and it fruits out. Things like PFT cakes and jars, you'll sit on a little bit of foil and put it on top so it's not sitting directly on the perlite. And that's it. Simplest way to grow mushrooms. Gotcha, good isn't it? And this is dusty stuff. This container will provide the perfect humidity for your mushroom kit. It's just a matter of having it in there on the perlite and just keeping the walls with droplets on them with your spray bottle. Even if you forget a couple of days, the perlite does it all for you. And that's it. Really simple way to make a perfect environment for your mushrooms at home. You can sit on the kitchen bench, anywhere in the house and watch them grow. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content coming soon. Check out our website for everything you need to grow mushrooms. We'll catch you next time. Tips for making your shotgun terrarium. Drilling smaller holes means you will be less likely to crack your plastic. Don't worry, if you crack it, it's still fine. It's just a bigger hole. Number two, strainers are a great way for soaking your perlite with a tap. Just fill up your strainer and run it under the tap until it's all nice and wet. Number three, as long as there's water droplets on the side of your container, you know it's humid enough for the mushrooms. When misting, mist it all over the walls. Don't spray your mushrooms directly for a more natural humidity. Number four, don't sit blocks or cakes directly under the perlite because your mushroom fungus will jump off and try and colonize it. Have fun, this is a great way to make a simple little humid area for your mushrooms. Yeah! That was good. Grow it on your bench at home. Yes! Yes! I can do it in my kitchen, on my dining room table, wherever I want to do it. Mushrooms for days. <coughs> Should we go outside for some fresh air? Uh, it's just all collected in my throat. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> we are in this confined, confined room.